Hi everybody, it's uh, good to see you and good for you to be seeing me. We're moving into Ecclesiastes. Remember, we're looking for Jesus in the Old Testament. And um, Ecclesiastes can make you blush if you read it. Um, it's pretty graphic uh, sexual content. Um, and, you know, so what's it doing in the Bible? <laughs> you know, why is it there? And um, some say, well, it's an allegory for how we're supposed to love God. Well, that's okay. And others say that it's, a, you know, it's a manual for people getting married. No, okay. I think there's more to it than that. And I think um, it, you, you can understand Ecclesiastes better if we go um, back to the garden before the fall. And what was th what were things like then? What what was it like with um, no exploitation, no toil, no uh, contending against nature? Um, where we join in creation and 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 where God is fully loved, and we understand that we are fully loved by God. Where there is no sin, where there's no destruction, where there's no wars, where there's no um, broken relationships, where there's no divorce. Where you know what would a world be like? like that. And Ecclesiastes is giving us an example of what pure love would look like before the fall. And whether that's love for your spouse, or whether that's love for God, or Jesus Christ, or God's love for us, um, it all fits into one big word called love. Um, I... I've been bothered by some funerals, or not funerals, but weddings I've gone to where the pastor gets up and quoting out of the New Testament, I think misquoting it, but talking about how a woman should be subjective to a man and that the man is the head of the household. Um, that, by the way, that instruction is in Genesis, but it's given after the fall. So that's post-fall instruction. That's because we're sinners, uh, this was set up this way. Because we're sinners, we had to set up a hierarchy where one person's over another. That was because of the fall. But now Christ has entered the picture, and he's bringing us back to before the fall. He's bringing us back into a new relationship with God, with him, and with each other in the church and with our marriages and spouses. And in this new creation... Uh, we're back to before the fall, and one person's not over another person. <laughs> one person's not better than another person. We need each other equally, and we our strengths help the other person. Our weaknesses are helped by the other person. All of that is part of God's plan and God's purpose. And all of that stuff about the husband being head and over is just, uh, not the way God first created us to be. You remember that one of the curses uh, after the fall was that the woman will want to please the husband. That's a cur That's due to the curse, not the way it should be. Um, in a, I think a good relationship, you each have strengths, you each have weaknesses, you work together to for the common good, for the family, for the world. And uh, there doesn't need to be this hierarchy about one being better than another. And it's not the way God originally intended, I believe. So um, we're going to be going through Song of Solomon. I don't know exactly how many places we're going to be able to find God in Song of Solomon. That'll be very interesting to see where we find Jesus, I mean. Um, but it should be a wild ride. <laughs> a lot of pastors don't preach in this book because it, you know, it's embarrassing. And it can get very embarrassing. Uh, so we'll look at some of those passages, and we'll get embarrassed together. And um, hopefully we'll find Jesus in this uh, book. And I, I know we will be able to do that. So uh, God bless. Have a great day. And uh, realize that Jesus has changed our world and changing our lives by changing our hearts. Um, God bless, and have a great day.